let's focus upon you and allow the Holy Spirit now to take his place in this, in this service tonight. We'll give you all the praise and all the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please just make your at home tonight, Miss Shannon. Pray for us tonight. There's a little bit of nerves going on tonight. Um, and don't listen to how we sing it, but just listen to the words. And we're going to have the words up on the monitors. So if y'all guys, and on the first song, I'd really love us all to just sing along with it. Everybody should know it is um, Who Am I? So if everybody will just stand up and sing this song with us. <clears throat> Somebody will meet you there.
started you know we've done these songs we've picked them out because honestly whenever Austin told us to do the worship I was like what are we going to do what are we going to do and even when we went on our trip I was just constantly thinking about what songs we're going to do what are we going to do because I mean we want to come in here and lift our young people up and send them off because this world is just crazy you know it's crazy and things are going on and each one of these songs if you listen to them is about who God says who you are. It doesn't matter what people say or what people think, but at the end of the day, when you lay it down your head at night, yeah. is what he thinks of you, and if he knows who you are, yeah. and if you know his name, and to always know that he is going to fight for you, and that he is a good God Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. So just as we're singing these songs, y'all just... And just listen to the words. They are they're they're just beautiful. Okay, Nathan. I need the kind of love that can outlast the night. I need the kind of love that is willing to fight.
Cause I know nobody loves me better Hold on to me Hold on to me Hold on to me gears we're gonna um i'll just let miss sheila say something uh, they, asked, they asked me to talk believe it or not <laughs> well we went on a youth retreat here uh back in june and they asked me to go with them now you know i'm kind of old here yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what that was for me not them i got to spend time with these teenagers, and it blessed me so much. Um, there were some bumps along the way, of course. Anytime you get a bunch of folks together, you're going to have a couple of bumps, but that's okay. It's moved right back out again by the grace of God. But one of the things that we tried to explain to them is not only how much God loves us, but how He wants us to have fun. He wants us to be happy. He loves to see his children laugh and have a good time with one another. And, you know, that's, that's what we try to instill in them. It's, it's not about the things of, the, of this world. It's about spending the quality time with each other and, and with God and praising him because he's got it. We just have to let him have it. This next song that we're going to sing is one of my all-time favorites. Braylee, you going to come help me? Did, Actually, if everybody did could God. help us, everybody just stand up and we're going to clap and we're going to just give God the glory and just say how good God is and good God Almighty. <laughs>
wish y'all could have seen them Friday night when we were practicing. We were all exhausted from having Bible school all week. And um, we had a stage up here, and it was hilarious. Like, we just had a good old time, and I think it was probably about 10 o'clock before we left here um, Friday night, just praising Jesus. I think, uh, I think we've been missing out a little bit. I think we're going to have them practice every Friday night. What do you think? Amen. It'd be great. At this time, Nathan's going to show us a quick slideshow of the uh, youth retreat that we had this year. Kind of get that in our young folks' mind as they uh, get back to school. And then we'll have Mr. Joshua come up and speak for us tonight. Nathan, if you're ready. Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me Praising your name no matter what comes I can't count the times I've called your name from broken night And you showed up and patched me up like
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all day, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all day, Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, hey, every day, every day, I'm blessed. Yeah, every day I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yeah, every day, every day I'm blessed. Yeah, every day I'm blessed. faded us out there, didn't you? <laughs> I knew Miss Chesney was a good ball player, but I didn't realize she possessed so many talents. I tell you, that's something else. But I'm glad y'all had a good trip. I'm glad all that went, went, went well. And uh, why don't you stand for just a minute and rest yourself after watching that for just a few minutes. And uh, let me just uh, give you a quick little backstory tonight. I think from all of the uh, people that we've been privileged to have come and speak with our young people at our back to school events and services, uh, probably tonight, Mr. Joshua is probably going to be uh, a person that is probably the closest to being where you are at. Uh, just graduating and just now starting his college career, um, he knows exactly what it's like to be. Uh, dealing with the school setting, that kind of thing, and all the pressures and all those kind of things that go with it. You can be seated. And um, I had the privilege of meeting him. As a matter of fact, Miss uh, Angela, his mom, which is good to have Josh's family with us tonight, 
uh, she had called me and asked me about doing some work at their home. And so I had listened uh, to the Raiders play a good, bit, a good many times. Cindy and I would go out and get us, you know, maybe a little food on Friday night, and drive around, listen to the Raiders play, and that kind of thing. And of course, I would hear his name quite a bit. And um, whenever she had called me and told me that she was Angela Pickett, I thought, I wonder if she's related to him. And so when I got to their home and uh, I'd ask her about that, and she said, yeah. She said, Josh was in the basement. <laughs> and so uh, she brought him up, let me meet him before I left, and I was so impressed with him as a young man. And so I thought, uh, when I was praying about our service, I thought how great it would be if his schedule would allow him to, and if he would be willing to, uh, if he could come by tonight, just kind of share his heart with us. I don't exactly know what he'll be saying. That's really up to him. And we give him all the time he needs to do that. But um, um, actually, I had lost Miss Angela's number, which was the only contact number I would have had. And so um, I think it was just last Friday, she had called to ask me about uh, someone to maybe do some more work for her. And it gave me an opportunity to ask her about asking Mr. Joshua, if he could come be with us, and he has graciously uh, accepted our invitation. And so uh, I want to encourage you to pray for him as he begins his career at uh, Duke University. He'll be heading back up that way pretty soon, early this week. And so pray for safety for him. Pray that the Lord would just open great doors for him, do great things there. And um, as I say, if you followed... Uh, Raider basketball or especially football, uh, he doesn't need an invitation or need an introduction, I should say, tonight. Uh, but let's welcome Mr. Joshua Pickett. <laughs> Uh, first, I want to give all honor to God and uh, thank Pastor Kelly for inviting me here today. Um, God has continuously blessed me uh, with many opportunities. I'm extremely grateful. Um, this evening, I want to talk about the importance of setting goals. I had goals when I was in middle school and high school, but I never wrote them down and measured them, so they were never really clearly defined. My number one goal was to go Division I to play football or basketball, um, even though I knew this was my goal, I still never clearly defined it. However, I did know in order to go D1, um, to D1 School for Athletics, I had to make good grades and do very well in sports. And my parents clearly defined that for me. <laughs> they always told me that if I did not perform first in the classroom, they would not even give me the opportunity to play sports at all. Grades, attitude, and respect for others were always more important in my household. I worked hard, and I finished my high school credit hours a semester early and was able to get a head start in college as a mid-year freshman. My grades, football performance, and my reputation were the very things that were, that were evaluated by scouts as, a, as I earned a scholarship, um, scholarship offers to several colleges. In college, I realized how important it was to set goals. One of my mentors at Duke gave me a goal-setting sheet to help me clearly define my goals and explain to me how important it is to use this in order to measure what I have set to achieve and determine what else I may need to do. He told me and approximately 15 other freshmen to write down 32 goals that we have for ourselves and when we want to achieve them, so meaning between the years that we want to achieve these goals. I'm still in the process of working on this for myself, and I find it very helpful to do this because it gives me some type of direction and where I want to go in my life. I want to challenge anyone out here tonight, not, not just speaking to young people, but speaking to, to the older people out here too, the, the veterans. Uh, I want to challenge each of you to seek God's guidance and clearly define any goals that you have before the school year starts or before, before you go back to work the next day or something like that. And, and, I, and identify the steps that you need to take to achieve them. As this picture symbolizes right here, your goal should be formed from God. The D in God makes the A and L in goal. So showing that when you put God first, 
and spread it can spread out for more opportunities just as the end of goal. So right here, goal, if you put goal together, it looks like God. So we put God first, spreads out the goal, gives you more opportunities. Don't feel like your goals have to be exactly the same as anyone else's or even close to it because they're for you. We're all unique, and God has a plan for each and every one of us, no matter what it is. Others may have completely different goals, and that's completely fine and normal because what you want to achieve should be important to you, even if it's not to someone else. I've had many mentors from church to the classroom and athletic coaches and a very strong support system at home. I encourage you to embrace these positive people in your life to help you grow and achieve your goals and to even hold you accountable. In anything you do, always keep God first, be strong in the Lord, and do not lose your values for anyone else. Treat others with kindness and respect, be grateful and remain humble, and remember that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Thank you. I'd like to ask Miss Sandra if she'll come and our fellows if they'll come. And uh, what I'd like for us to do tonight, if it'd be okay, and if you don't, don't mind to do this, I would like uh, in a few minutes maybe for all of our young folks to come up and maybe just kind of gather out in the aisle here. And you and I will gather around. You can even gather around at the edges of the pews if you'd like to, but we'd like to have a prayer for our young folks. And as uh, Mr. Joshua shared with us tonight, that they would have the right frame of mind, that they would seek uh, the help of the Holy Spirit in guiding them. And as he said, you and I as well. As we've tried to, tried to stress before, I mean, scriptures are not just some lofty things, but they are practical and should be applied and accepted practically in our days. And all the things that you and I are challenged with, all the, all the challenges we face, all of, all of our routine things, isn't it good to know that he is with us all the time, every day? And so um, I want to encourage everyone to do exactly that. And as this year starts back, I do trust that um, the Lord will connect uh, you as young people with other young people of like precious faith, uh, that you will have that support system not only at home and here, but uh, also at school as well. And um, I just trust, too, that your light can shine. Amen? It'd be wonderful to let people know of the love of Christ. And the best way to do that is to allow the Lord to guide you into that destiny, as Joshua mentioned tonight, because he's got a plan. Isn't it good his plans are better than our plans? <laughs> he said that we, he had a plan and a future for us. And so that's a good thing, and I want to encourage all of our folks, especially our young folks tonight, to know that. And uh, I trust things will start smoothly for you. Uh, if you're like uh, Chesney and, uh, um, and Emily and Miss Kaylin tonight, you hadn't even got to worry about it for another week. Isn't that awful? Hadn't got to go back to another week. Uh, but still, if you're starting in the school system, uh, the county system rather, that'll be Friday, I think, for you. So um, I don't know when Mr. Coley and those folks in, in Hall County start back, but they're all pretty well, pretty close right here. Uh, but we want to give them a good send off back into their school time. And uh, also we have a little meal prepared up in the fellowship hall. I'd love to encourage everyone to stay and to uh, be a part of that with us. We'd just love to uh, send you home blessed and fed tonight if we possibly can. Uh, but I'd like for you to, to uh, get around, which I know you will. Uh, fellowship with Mr. Joshua. Let him know that you're praying for him as he takes this next step. And uh, also fellowship with uh, Mr. Harrell, which I just had an opportunity to meet tonight, Miss Angela, Miss Kayla. Let them know that you appreciate them. And we appreciate you as a family coming to support Joshua tonight. But I could really tell that when I had the privilege and opportunity to be in their home just for a little bit. I could tell they were a very, very, very strong family. It was so impressive. So young folks, y'all don't mind. Why don't you come on out to the middle of the aisle here? And we'd like to just kind of gather around and pray for you here before we finish our service.
and every one of you will with me tonight. How about just standing? Let's kind of gather around where you feel comfortable doing that. <clears throat> tonight to focus on our young people, Father, to uh, have Mr. Joshua come, his family be here, all of these families